All right, everyone. My name is Pascal Borel, and I'm not talking to you from the Swiss mountains for today. I'm still in Geneva, and I'm going to read you the book I have written named 2024. It contains mainly a roadmap to give back the power, I should say, of our democracies at the service of the only sovereign, the people, the citizen. You. It covers many different subjects, such as health, education, the legal framework, our constitutions, our governance system overall, and mostly it offers you a roadmap that will guide you through the shortest possible way in recovering your sovereignty. It talks about uh, financial flows, how is it organized between citizens and governments, uh, and why should it be restructure in order to literally give a future to your own children. The book is available both in French and in English. I've written it in French and in English uh, on Amazon or on our website www.4ovet. 24.com. On the website, you can read through the, all the different chapters. You have them available in podcasts and videos. You have everything available, just like on YouTube. And you will find at the end of each chapter a comment section. And please be welcome to, you know, uh, criticize so I can learn from your opinion or, you know, tell me about your ideas. How can I modify it eventually uh, so that I can, yeah, as I said, learn from you. 2024 on Amazon and on at 24com Today, I'm uh, reading the third chapter called Demos Kratos, from democracies, Demos Kratos, Demos, the people, Kratos, decide. A few citations. Once upon a time, Rome, belonged to its people and we are going to return it to its people. The management of the state is not a business aimed at making profit at the expense of citizens. Each of your thoughts, each of your words, each of your actions is a declaration. It's an announcement of the world in which you think you live, of the world in which you wish to live. Forcing you to live in an environment against your will is a rape. The freedom you enjoy in a democracy comes from the rules we have chosen. We respect them, and no one can break them without consequences. The constitutions and the legal framework are the indispensable foundations that permit harmonious life for human beings in free communities. The state, and therefore the politicians, are the defenders of these rules, or are meant to be. They are the guardians of the respect for rules that apply to everyone in the same way. As such, politicians are an essential link in the proper functioning of our societies. They are not our, your enemies our enemies. On the contrary, they are your indispensable allies. You choose them. They are elected by the people or they are drawn by lot. 
they are at your service. You pay them and they are your representatives meant to serve you to the best of their ability to give you a good life. Most of the time they are intelligent, dedicated people who try to act in the interest of the majority and in accordance with their personal convictions. The foundations are there. But even if a system works and is satisfactory 90% of the time, it is still improvable. Any system, whether political, constitutional or legal, must evolve to adapt to changes, changes in lifestyle, available technology, the speed of exchanges, instant communication, dietary habits, education, etc., etc. If the system no longer defends the fundamentals of the evolution of life, if it, is, if it has become so complex that it renders itself ineffective by allowing everything in its opposite, if it has become more expensive to maintain than the wealth-generating capacity of its users, if its leaders cost more than what they bring, or if it simply no longer satisfies the majority, then it must be changed. Based on the existing system, it must be simplified, rethought, made effective and accessible. You are aware that the only constant in the universe is change. Despite this, a majority of us fear a change. In Mother Nature, no action is rushed, yet everything is accomplished. Change is the rule. If you fear it, it is because of your education, because it no longer is able to expose you to the only constant in the universe and to teach you how to make the best use of it. The standardization of education has imposed on you a loss of direct connection with the fundamentals of life. It wants to avoid confronting you with the conflicts that arise from changes because it might be too painful for you. You no longer even have the will to question what you perceive as set in stone when you are the sovereign, when you are the one who decides. When will you wake up? When will you stop thinking that the inertia of the machine prevents you from choosing your path, even though you are at the helm, even though you are in control? The first Greek democracies did not elect their representatives. They were chosen by lot. This may seem counterintuitive, but if you take the time to think about it, you quickly arrive at the conclusion that a lottery is much more democratic than elections. Do you think jurors in a court should be elected? Of course not. They are chosen by lot to guarantee the impartiality of the final judgment. In any given population, a lottery is the only way to obtain representatives from all backgrounds, from all walks of life, with the most diverse range of opinions, as many men as women, as many young as old, as many manual workers as intellectuals, as many religious as secular, as many rich as poor. It is the only way to represent the people as a whole, to include all members of the community.
and to ensure no one is left behind. Moreover, it forces consensus, understanding beyond our differences, beyond the interests of a minority of elected officials who all come, come from the same circles, who all think the same way, who all come from the same schools, and who all lend each other mutual assistance to impose their will upon you. The advantages of a lottery are so numerous, so obvious, that we will undoubtedly return to this concept sooner or later. Social democracies based on ideologies of Marxist origin, intellectually satisfying but in complete rupture with the natural rules of life's evolution, cannot sustain themselves. Force nature out, and it comes back at a gallop. Social political systems that allocate resources to community members who contribute little or nothing to our human system cannot last. As a collaborative species, this fact is very difficult to accept because our success largely depends on the support that unites individuals and makes us stand together. We are united by family ties. Ohana, we will, leave, we will not leave anyone destitute on the side of the road. Ohana. Therefore, the system must be changed by making the left behind responsible, by restoring their desire and ability to contribute in their own way to the overall success of our species and more generally to the success of life on our planet. We have no chance of achieving this by assisting and subsidizing these people. On the contrary, social assistance kills dignity, destroys any personal value, puts individuals in dependency and ultimately destroys their ability to take responsibility. I would even say it destroys any will to live because it signifies the total uselessness of the individuals. Social systems that only subsidize the left behind will never be stable and will never provide long-term satisfaction. Nevertheless, politicians have clearly understood that if they make you feel guilty by accusing you of not helping the less fortunate, you will vote for leaders who propose social contributions that ease your conscience. They use the fundamental collaborative nature of our species to attain power at the cost of the most terrible lies. They know that by taking 60 to 80 percent of the value of your work through taxes, inflation, and political debt, also known as public debt, they don't have, they do not have a chance. Uh, of keeping their promises. It makes no economic sense to turn a system that encourages doing nothing, in inverted comma, and living subsidized by the all-powerful state. Moreover, a centralized state cannot help the most disadvantaged it is the role of local communities to take on this responsibility. However, the power-hungry sharks uh, who serve as our leaders today must accept to delegate this responsibility to decentralize, which would deprive them of part of their budget.
part of their power. They will only do so if forced to do so. Thanks to our brains and our technology, humans are champions of evolution in environments that are sometimes welcoming, sometimes hostile. Whether they are natural, like the mountains, the sea, or the jungle, whether they are technological, like transportation or space, whether they are constitutional, like our democracies, nothing resists our ability to adapt to our environment. We are everywhere, and we create the necessary condition for our survival through our knowledge, our technology, and our collaborative capacity. The solution, therefore, lies in a change of constitutional and legal environment that leads to the end of the dinosaurs. In fact, to the end of professional politicians who control and use the system to their sole advantage. This environmental, constitutional, and legal change must redefine the mandate of professional politicians, the mandate of the leaders of our human societies in the service of the only true sovereign, the people, you. In reality, the role of a government is to protecting private property and intellectual property. Full stop. The role of internal security and defense is dictated by the same primary mission. In a direct democracy, every sector of human activity must be managed by professionals competent in their own fields not by politicians who, by definition, are incompetent. They're not actually in, even incompetent. They are non-existent. And we can't reproach it you know, to them. It is just not their job. Demos Kratos. The people decide. For example, Infrastructures should be in the hands of construction professionals. Education in the hands of teaching professionals. Health in the hands of doctors. And justice in the hands of judges. It is the same for all professions. It is up to professionals to give economic logic to their actions. Politicians have no place in all the sectors mentioned above. They have no specific knowledge in these fields. They standardize everything through administrative processes to justify and retain the powers that the people have given them, or rather, to retain the powers they have stolen from the people. The administrative paperwork that the state imposes on us wastes the time of professionals but allows politicians to keep control by giving themselves the illusion of competence and usefulness. In doing so, they replace the creativity and efficiency of specialists in their fields with processes and with procedures which standardize all their actions. At best, they manage with the inefficiency of government structures, doubling or tripling the costs of service re-ended. Politicians have appropriated all these sectors of activity because they represent colossal budgets the largest budgets of all the nation. As they control them, they collect their taxes. They, and at a minimum, they extract the money necessary for their own quality of life. 
this must stop. And it is the duty of states to give it up, to give you back your purchasing power, to return to you the value of your work so that you can become an entrepreneur and a driving force in the economy once more. The only good decisions are those that you take yourself, not those taken by others in the name of common good, which is a concept that does not apply to the individual. Indeed, as a collaborative species, if you do what is right for yourself and for your loved ones, for you, for your family and your friends, you are already doing what is right for the majority. QED. I say it once more. Demos Kratos, the people decide. The general will is what the people want what is recognized as defending the, interest of the interests of the majority. The role of leaders is not to become the general will. It is to listen and understand what the general will is, what the only sovereign, the people, wants. Politicians are paid by the citizens to bring the structures to life and to faithfully translate into concrete actions what the people demand. Leaders give the people the constitutional and legal structures that allow citizens to exercise their sovereignty. The constitutions and the laws of a nation are the faithful expression of our will to live together. If it is otherwise, we must rewrite them. It is not astonishing that the managers of social democracies today have convinced you that they take the bulk of the value of your work in your interest. They have convinced you that you are too weak or too stupid to take on your responsibilities, the education of your children, take care of your health, or managing your expenses. They even go so far as to make you feel guilty about climate change to justify the 400 to 800% margin taxes that they levy on your energy. It should be the states and their managers who take charge of your life because they are the only one capable of so doing. To ensure your cooperation, they claim to preserve the common good, to help the less fortunate and to protect you from the dangers that threaten you. When they run out of dangers, they create them out of thin air. Because to control someone, they must make them afraid. They even go so far as to make you feel antisocial if you express any doubts about their way of spending your money, the product of your work. You should be grateful that the state take care of the irresponsible person that you are. They will not hesitate to use the system of legal violence you have delegated to them to bring you back into line. Have you forgotten that human beings have become the dominant species on the planet because each individual is fully capable of managing themselves in respect of the rules of their environment and in harmony with their family and community? Have you forgotten that we are genetically programmed to get along and collaborate with one another? It is your duty 
to bring back the fundamental characteristics of our species as the driving force of our civilizations. Once again, as the champion of evolution that you are, you will adapt according to the environment that you build and in which you wish to live, in which you should be proud to pass on to your children. Summary. Democracy. Demos Kratos. The people decide. You must regain control of the democracy in which you live today. Politicians have the duty to give you back power. It is up to them to provide you with the constitutional and legal tools that allow you to exercise your sovereignty. You must recreate the spirit of the only democracies that have lasted for several centuries, the first Greek democracies. Thank you for your benevolent attention. Peace out.